Uh, good afternoon. The first item of business is a member's business debate on motion 10648 in the name of Dean Lockhart and campaign to save ATMs. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to take part in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Dean Lockhart to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Lockhart. Right, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very pleased to bring to the Chamber this member's debate in relation to the potential closure of free-to-use ATMs across Scotland. Let me start by thanking members who have supported the motion allowing us to debate an issue which has the potential to affect all of our constituencies and regions. I would also like to recognise the excellent joint campaign by which and the Federation of Small Business, which has attracted over 75,000 signatures across the UK to highlight this concern. As members will be aware, automated teller machines have a long history in Scotland, with the first ATM being introduced in the late 1960s. In fact, the very concept of the ATM was pioneered by two Scotsmen, James Goodfellow from Paisley and John Shepherd Barron from Inverness, with the latter originally imagining that a cash machine could, could operate just like a chocolate dispenser. ATMs have clearly come a long way since then. There are now 5,200 free-to-use ATMs across Scotland offering a wide range of banking services and forming an invaluable part of communities and local economies. Despite the increasing use of digital transactions, cash is still the most common method of payment in the high street, with more than one-third of total high street spending being dependent on the ready availability of cash machines. FSB research highlights that local ATMs inject an average of £16 per withdrawal directly into nearby stores, and research by which has shown that 90% of Scottish consumers consider the availability of free cash machines as being an important part of their everyday lives. The importance of local free-to-use ATMs has only increased following the recent closure of a number of bank branches. ATMs are now often the only means uh, for people across Scotland to access cash and banking services. Deputy Presiding Officer, given the importance of ATMs for local communities, serious concerns were raised in January this year when the UK's largest cash point network, Link, announced plans to ch change the fee structure under which ATM operators are paid for the use of their ATMs. The proposed changes announced by Link would re reduce the fee paid to ATM operators by 20% over the next four years. The critical issue is that this fee reduction has the potential to close many hundreds of ATMs across Scotland as they would become financially unviable. The Federation of Small Business has estimated that around one in 10 ATMs in Scotland, that's over 500 ATMs, are at risk. If these proposals go ahead, those who will be hardest hit are those who are most reliant on using cash, including those in rural communities, where branch closures have already limited access to cash and banking services, resulting in a double whammy if ATM services are also withdrawn. The FSB has estimated that rural areas will potentially be the hardest hit by these proposals, with one in five, 20% of ATMs in rural, rural areas at risk. These proposals would also have an adverse impact on vulnerable and deprived communities where free-to-use ATM coverage is already limited. Age Scotland has expressed concerns that poor mobility and the lack of public transport will make it difficult for older people to access more distant ATMs. And for small retailers, the closure of a local ATM would damage their business. Small retailers are cash businesses. According to the Scottish uh, Grocers Federation, 76% of all transactions of their members are cash-based. And research shows that without a nearby ATM, more than 20% of consumers would be less likely to use a local shop, and one in seven consumers would find it more difficult to pay for goods in cash. Evidence given last week at the Economy Committee, uh, which is uh, undertaking an inquiry into bank branch closures, highlighted that many small retail retailers also rely on the cash deposit facilities of ATM machines, with many facing insurance requirements to deposit cash at the end of every day or every second day. Without a local ATM facility, those retailers may have to travel up to two or three hours uh, to get to their nearest cash deposit facility with clear implications for managing the cash flow, staffing and productivity issues. The Link Network has responded to these widespread concerns. It has given assurances that vulnerable consumers and remote ATMs will be protected 
by some measures. This includes its financial inclusion programme, which provides funding of up to £3 million for the retention of ATMs in areas that are underserved. However, it is unclear how this will work in practice. It's unclear how this £3 million additional funding will offset the impact of the reduction in the interchange fee, which will see £200 million taken out of the system. And the FSB has estimated that the financial inclusion programme would only apply to 220 ATMs in Scotland. That's less than 5% of the network. Uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, it's important that we do acknowledge the changing nature of banking and the increasing use of online banking and cashless transactions. It's equally important that we acknowledge the pressures banks face with interest rates lower for longer, increasing regulatory compliance and the increasing cost of doing business. However, cost reduction exercises that would result in the closure of hundreds of ATMs across Scotland cannot and should not be the answer to those pressures. I've therefore written to the chairman of the LINK scheme to call for the proposed changes to be reconsidered and for the LINK network and member banks to take another look at the impact of these proposals on consumers, small businesses and communities. If the objective of the LINK network is to achieve a better geographic and demographic balance of ATMs, there are better ways to achieve this. I have also written to the payment systems regulator, the relevant regulator in this matter, to ask that they closely monitor all proposed changes to the LINK, MasterCard and Visa payment systems to ensure that any changes in the future to these systems will prioritise consumers' access to free-to-use ATMs. In all of this, it's vital that the ATM network is not just seen as another banking service from which to make money, but instead is viewed as a core service offered by the banking industry as part of its wider commitment to local stakeholders. Thank you very much. And thank you. And can I say to members, as we must conclude by 2 p.m. to let the next business go on, I want to get all members in. I must be very strict and people must keep, members must keep exactly to their time. No ifs, no buts, no extra seconds. Couldn't make it clearer. I call Gail Ross, who will show you the way, followed by Jamie Halker-Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to start by thanking Witch and FSB for their campaign on this issue and also to Dean Lockhart for bringing this debate to the Chamber today which in FSB have been working tirelessly to bring the threat of ATM closures to our attention, and I'm glad that we can debate it here today. The reason which an FSB have had to raise this issue, as Dean Lockhart has already highlighted, is that in January this year, the UK's largest cash point network, Link, announced plans to reduce the amount paid by card issuers to ATM operators for every use of a free ATM by a customer. These plans will reduce the amount received by ATM operators by 20% per transaction from July this year, a move which is likely to make thousands of ATMs across the UK financially unviable. In rural constituencies like mine, the removal of ATMs will not only add to the great difficulties already created by bank closures, but it will also have a considerable effect on tourism, making visitors less able to contribute to local economies. As a rural MSP and the Deputy Convener of the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee, I have fought against bank closures and I'm also fighting for better provision of mobile banking. I will continue to challenge these decisions, but until the banks see sense, the role of ATMs is vital to the cash-based economy of rural Scotland. Tourism is a key sector in my constituency and the creation of the North Coast 500 has helped harness its potential. Having ATMs along the NC500 route is key to ensuring tourists can access money when they wish and spend it freely in local businesses. Not all small rural businesses take cards and many may have card limits. Cash points can ensure that tourists can spend despite this. ATMs do not, however, just assist where businesses don't take card. They also increase the likelihood that customers will spend money. FSB research shows that on average, local ATMs inject some £16 per withdrawal directly into nearby shops. And keeping ATMs in towns and villages is an important way of continuing tourist investment. Rather than removing ATMs, companies should be increasing their numbers and ensuring that they are accessible. Of the 60 or so ATMs in my constituency, nearly half are inside shops and banks, meaning that they do not have 24-hour access. 
The welcome increase in tourism created by the NC500 makes it increasingly likely that existing ATMs will run out of cash. Just last month, the Northern Star newspaper reported cash machines run dry in Tain. As closed banks lead to increased demand on ATMs, they will run out of cash more regularly unless their numbers are increased. Link and its members should realise that the disappointing bank closures across rural areas mean that there is no better time to invest in ATMs. In my constituency, many local business owners would like to see an increase in cash and deposit ATMs, which allow customers to deposit money as well as taking it out. More of these ATMs would allow rural businesses to bank quickly and easily and prevent the safety and security issues which come with holding large sums of money on business premises or in homes. ATMs will continue to have a ro role in rural areas because of their importance to tourism and the cash-based economy. It is therefore vital that we ensure continued access to cash and we join which and the FSB in urging Link and its members to review their decision in light of the implications. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Jamie Halker Johnson, we're followed by Joan McAlpine. Mr. Halker Johnson, please. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I congratulate my colleague Dean Lockhart on securing today's debate on what is obviously an important issue. Uh, it comes at a time when the Economy Committee, on which, I, uh, which I'm a member of, is investigating bank branch closures, an issue which has current relevance across the UK. And of course, the House of Commons uh, Scottish Affairs Committee is also taking evidence on the access to ATMs specifically. So I welcome this political attention on what is clearly a matter of considerable interest to people across the country, but also more keenly felt in the rural and remote parts of my own region of the Highlands and Islands, as Gail Ross has said. In recent decades, people have become increasingly used to ready accessible cash. Uh, as Dean Lockhart mentioned, Scotland can claim to be the home of the modern ATM. Its original inventor, John Shepherd Barron, brought forward the concept that created the first Barclays machine, and his, intervention, uh, his invention was built upon by a Paisley man, James Goodfellow, who developed the machine-readable card accompanied by a PIN number, reducing the need for slightly radioactive imprinting of the check-like documents that were paid in. The Enfield branch of uh, Barclays still operates today, but bears a blue plaque noting its place in history. It is captioned, lives made much easier, a testament to the role that ATMs have played in our modern history. The advances in contactless and chip and pin technology have doubtless had an effect on the use of ATMs. However, for many, cash remains the default method of, uh, of purchase. The FSB has spoken about the higher level of cash transactions for small businesses, and at a recent economy committee meeting, small convenience store owners told us how customers took money out of the ATM in the store. Some of that money was uh, then spent in the store, and then the shopkeeper put much of it back into the ATM, showing the importance of the ATM in supporting that business and the cyclical nature of the cash economy it relies on. And of course, cash withdrawals can also be used as a form of budgeting, with people taking out a weekly amount and being able to closely monitor their spending in certain areas. Some of the proposals from the payment system regulator have been sensible attempts to agree to a reasonable way forward with LINK, but it will inevitably be an area that must be closely monitored in coming years. So while we may look to the future and the potential of an increasingly cashless society, cash is still an important part of many local economies, and there remains a risk that some of the more vulnerable citizens and businesses will be left behind by a banking system that is increasingly difficult to access in the ways they are used to. Indeed, cashless transactions have grown at pace without any great discussion of what the implications might be. And people are often being forced to change business practices and their own banking practices with very little support or forewarning. But the impact in specific areas and for specific groups of people should be considered. Looking geographically, which has observed that Shetland has the highest level of charging cash machines in Scotland, comfortably over half requiring a fee for withdrawals. This is, however, based on rel a relatively small sample size. Link has, uh, Link has identified that there are a total of 31 ATMs in the Northern Isles taken together, of which 20 are free to use. And these ATMs are important. Indeed, they are crucial for the sustainability of the rural shop, which relies so heavily on cash. And these shops themselves are so important uh, as part of their communities, providing a hub and a place to meet, particularly for those who otherwise might, might face social isolation. So ATMs can be an, an integral part of the rural economy. Um, I do not think anyone is in seriously uh, advocating getting rid of free uh, fee-paying ATMs in their entirety, which itself observes that they can offer additional convenience, but it should not be at the cost of losing out on existing position, uh, provision, which is why ATMs and branches should be considered in the round. Access to money and banking services continue to be important, yet for many it can be feel impossible to carry out relatively simple requirements. 
When online banking facilities fail, as we've seen recently with problems at, at TSB, customers can be left with few alternatives. There may be many elements to play here, far too many to fit into a four-minute speech, but let's be very clear. If banks create barriers to custom service, customer service, then customers will look for banking services elsewhere. Presiding officer, I'll finish with a quote from James Goodfellow. You Cutting haven't time for Mr Goodfellow, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear him, but no. Joan McAlpine, followed by Monica Lennon, please. I am pleased to speak today on a subject of great importance to my constituents and I congratulate D Dean Locker on securing the debate. I'd also like to congratulate which the FSB and Age Scotland for their campaigning on this important matter. The decision by Link to reduce the interchange fee is all the more concerning against the backdrop of local branch closures. Uh, in my own area, uh, three market towns close together, Langham, Lockerbie and Annan, are all threatened with RBS closures and that was recently added to by a uh, proposed closure by Santander. And while fighting these closures, my constituents were assured that at the very least they would still be able to access cash machines. Now we are told that Scotland will be among the hardest hit by a drop in the number of free-to-use ATMs. And this is especially bad news for those from rural communities where one in five people already say that their nearest machine is far too far away to reach on foot. As is the case with anything to do with the financial sector, it's quite hard to get to the bottom of who is really responsible. But Link's membership is comprised of 37 banks, so this scandal again looks like it comes from the banks. Despite the reduced interchange fees, banks could make the decision to maintain free-to-use ATMs where they are attached to local branches that are pre-existing. But if the last few months are anything to go by, then relying on the social responsibility of RBS and Santander seems somewhat optimistic. The loss of a local branch can be difficult enough for a community to deal with, but losing a cash machine makes a bad situation worse. Once larger machines are removed from towns, smaller ones can't cope with demand. People are forced to travel ridiculous distances for one of a few pounds. And the amount of cash circulating in the town plummets, harming local businesses. I recently discovered that applications have been made to Dumfries and Galloway's planning department for the removal of an ATM machine in Annan. And it's my understanding that that's directly linked to the uh, reckless decisions made by RBS on bank closures. On a more positive note, campaigners in Mabel last week secured an impressive victory when RBS made a dramatic U-turn and reversed their decision to axe the town's ATM. And sustained pressure from local campaigners and MPs and MSPs has resulted in RBS offering a reprieve to the closure that threatened Gretna branch in my area and nine more across the country. Of course, all branches and ATMs across the region and across Scotland should be kept open and not just granted temporary reprieve. But these examples show that keeping up the pressure does have an impact and that's why debates like this are so important. People are rightly incensed by the idea that the banks can, that caused such carnage in 2008 are imposing more damage on communities. And I hope that the banking sector will learn from events of the past few months and recognise that there is a continued need for face-to-face -face provision as well as cash withdrawal and deposit machines. With regards to Link, they must acknowledge the responsibility as the network to which almost every cash machine in the UK is connected. In their submission to the Economy, Jobs and Fair Works Committee uh, inquiry on bank closures, Link stressed their commitment to providing consumers with access to their cash for free through the strengthening of their financial inclusion programme. But this is too important to, to leave to Link's voluntary corporate social responsibility. Is the role of the UK-wide payment systems regulator and the Bank of England, which also regulates Link, to ensure that co consumers are able to access cash effectively and efficiently. So maybe it's time for the Bank of England to step in and force Link to revise these plans. Thank you very much. Thank you. I call Monica Lennon to be followed by Richard Lockhead. Miss Lennon, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I also congratulate Dean Lockhart for securing this debate and thank WITCH and the FSB for their campaigns. It's an issue I've been following closely as my MP, the member for Rutherglen and Hamilton West, Jed Killen, has also been leading uh, work on the campaign and he plans to introduce a bill at Westminster uh, this month um, to create a legal requirement for free ATMs in order to protect free access to uh, people's cash. Uh, so I shared Jed Killen's concerns about Link's decision to effectively cut funds for those who operate free ATMs. 
Link, as we've heard, only consulted its own members about this decision, many of whom are large banks who have a commercial interest um, and didn't consult the public more widely. Yet the impact on the general public will be significant because we could see whole high streets and communities where no free-to-use free ATMs will exist. Less than six months ago, communities across Scotland were shaken when it was announced that over 60 bank branches faced closure and several RBS branches in my own region, Central Scotland, were affected, including the RBS branch in Hamilton Caddo Street and in Lark Hall. And Dean Lockhart already referred to the research by which, which shows how heavily people depend on access to free ATMs. We have no doubt that it's the most vulnerable people in our society who will be hit the hardest. People without their own access to transport, including the elderly and people with disabilities. Um, so the cost of ac accessing cash from fee charging ATMs will be felt most by those who can least afford it. If you've got 10 or 20 pounds left in the bank, having to pay a couple of quid to, to withdraw that out is putting people in real danger of being overdrawn and they simply can't afford it. I mentioned uh, RBS, uh, Hamilton Caslow Street branch will close. Um, in Hamilton, there's an ATM in Quarry Street, which currently charges £1.99. Lark Hall, which RBS is going to abandon. I know that, that Dean Lockhart hails from Lark Hall. St John Street uh, charges £1.75. Stonehouse, Draven Road, the ATM charges £1.99. East Kilbride, there's one that charges £1.85. And we could all go on and on. But in Lanarkshire, we know that one in five children are living in poverty. So it's simply unacceptable for families who are already struggling to be charged to access their own cash. We cannot allow these charges to become the norm. Link tells us it strengthens its financial inclusion programme by subsidising ATM operators with cash lines in low income areas. But the reality is that in areas that are already struggling to cope with poverty and deprivation, there's already an under provision of ATMs. Jed Killen, for example, counted more cash lines in just one corridor of the House of Commons than the whole of Cambridge Lang Main Street in his constituency. The banks and card issuers that make up much of Link's membership may have commercial concerns about the projections of reduced cash usage, but Link is a not-for-profit company with a social remit. Those who value ATMs as a lifeline service must be properly considered. So on behalf of my constituents across central Scotland, I add my voice to the calls of Jed Killen MP and organisations including WITCH, the FSB, for the payment system regulator to engage in a full market review of the effects of these proposed changes. And I welcome Jed Killen's plans to launch a bill at Westminster to protect free access to cash. And I hope that he gets the cross-party support that the bill deserves. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Richard Lockhead to be followed by Maurice Corrie. Mr Lockhead, please. I do congratulate Dean uh, Lockhart on securing this important debate so we can all make a contribution highlighting uh, importance of local constituencies and across uh, wider rural Scotland uh, in particular. And I also pay tribute to Which Magazine for their campaign and the FSB and Age Concern and others who have sent us valuable briefing for this debate. There is a sense at the moment in Scotland there is a new emerging banking crisis. This time it's not about subprime mortgages, but it is about banking facilities being withdrawn from Scotland's rural communities. And whilst many people, many com commentators for a long time have predicted the cashless society, that is still several decades away. But we are in danger of a combination of the UK authorities and their inaction combined with the banking sector's policies of creating cashless communities in rural Scotland. And that brings all kinds of detrimental social and economic impacts. Now, those of us who represent rural constituencies have seen just in the last two years in particular, the closure of many high street bank branches in our constituencies. I'm in the ludicrous position where in my constituency of Murray, in the whole of Speyside, we now have no high street bank branches left. They have all closed in the last couple of years. This is the part of Scotland which produces uh, one of the biggest revenue generators for the UK Treasury in terms of the whisky industry, because 50% of Scotch whisky is produced in Speyside. It's also the home of Walker Shortbread, a major uh, company that operates in 80 markets around the world. It's the centre of angling tourism and other economic sectors as well. And there's not one bank branch in the whole of Speyside representing uh, those sectors. Now, of course, in replacing the 
Bank branches have closed. We had the mobile banks that have been brought forward. Yet I've just had to see off a fight with the Royal Bank of Scotland, who wanted to reduce their twice weekly visits of the mobile bank to Dufton and Speyside. And thankfully, they reversed, they've reversed that decision, and that service will continue for the foreseeable future. But all that we have left are the holes in the wall, which at the moment contain auto bank machines. Uh, and these ATMs, therefore, are vital for these communities. So the idea that they could be removed because of the changing of the, the pricing is ludicrous and must absolutely be stopped. In fact, when the High Street branches closed in Aberlour and Speyside, they also took away the auto bank machines. So at the moment, Aberlour has no auto bank machines. And people have to travel to Rothes down the road which sometimes runs out of cash because it's, so many people are now dependent on getting cash from that ATM. And of course, when Aberlour's ATMs closed, there was no consultation I'm aware of with the local community or elected representatives. Now, this is a very important issue for the rural economy for a number of reasons. Firstly, some shops in many rural communities, and I was just in Wester Ross for my holidays over Easter, uh, and as one example of a spectacular area, only take cash. They only take cash because they've got fragile profit margins, and therefore they can't afford the cost of the card transactions. So they only take cash. So people can't access cash, tourists and other local people, then, of course, they're going to lose out big time these types of businesses. Secondly, in places like Aberlour and elsewhere in Speyside and rural Scotland, we're going to have summer shows and summer fets and Highland Games coming up, where charities and good causes raise money, as well as other organisations, and they depend upon visitors and tourists going to the local ATM, taking out some cash and going and spending it at the show. And then if they run out of cash, they can go back to the ATM and top up because they're having such a good time. If there's a cost and it's not free, that service, then they'll be put off from doing that in many cases. Therefore, the good causes, charities and businesses will lose out for that reason as well. And finally, in terms of rural Murray and many parts of Scotland, people don't have good broadband signal if they've got any at all. People don't have good mobile phone signal if they've got any at all. So therefore, not to have those uh, facilities to carry out their banking and to access cash in other ways uh, is very detrimental to their quality of life, particularly for elderly people. So I ask the Minister, please do what you can to address this issue with Link, and the UK Government should be setting up a task force to look, in, look into the rural banking crisis at the moment as well. Thank you very much. I call Maurice Colley to be followed by Mark MacDonald. Maurice thank Colley, you. please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I thank my colleague Dean Lockhart for bringing this important debate to the Chamber today. Throughout my region, as is in the case throughout Scotland, people, people face different challenges in different areas. For quite a few years now, we have been seeing the centralisation of many services. This has shown us the difficulties and challenges faced by those who do not live in central locations. People require certain facilities which can be accessed at any time. And this is particularly pertinent in my area, where Araka and Tarbert uh, are tourist area, where there is no ATM at all. Emergency situation doesn't allow time for waiting for a shop to open for you to withdraw cash, nor does the possibility of having to store more cash uh, within the home for these potential situations make us safer. I have had numerous co uh, constituencies constituents concerned by the declining banking services for differing reasons. With technology advances and, and the way in which people are now working from home, a growing number of people are, living away, are working from home and having not to travel. For people working from home in more rural areas, they are faced with either storing cash reserves in their house or a timely travel to withdraw cash. And for those, who, for those using public transport, this raises serious safety concerns. Older people are much more likely to travel on public transport and therefore are being put at risk by the potential decline in ATMs. This situation is only made more difficult by the recent closure of bank branches. If people don't have access to withdraw cash facility, to withdraw facilities for cash, there is a severe knock-on to the local economy, as already been mentioned throughout the country. Some areas within my region have already seen a recent high spate of burglaries, with the potential increase in cash being stored at home under the bed. Uh, it would be logical to, to assume that the number of, bur of burglaries may well increase as a result. Deputy Designing Officer, in conclusion, I feel the risks and danger that could pose to the public outweigh the cost implications to the service providers, and we must do everything within our power to ensure that these ATM services remain within our communities. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Corey, because your generosity has allowed the last two speakers to claw back to four minutes each. So I call Mark MacDonald to be followed by Lee Goujon. Mark MacDonald, please. Th th thank you, Presiding Officer. And I realise that um, today's debate, which I congratulate Dean Lockhart on securing and thank uh, Which and FSB for their campaign, has focused predominantly on uh, rural issues and rural communities, as is quite proper. And I wonder if I might 
uh, take the opportunity, though, to include a city-based perspective uh, into the debate. Um, the Clydesdale Bank currently proposes to close two bank branches in Scotland, uh, one of which is Maastricht in my constituency. Uh, the branch is located just opposite my constituency office within the Maastricht shopping centre. Uh, that branch has two ATMs attached to it. Uh, there's one other ATM within the centre, which is a link uh, ATM. So my concern, which brings me to speak in this debate, is that my constituents in Maastricht face a potential double whammy as a result of Clydesdale Bank's decision to close their branch and the potential implications of the decision by Link to reduce the transaction fee and therefore potentially make the, the ATM uh, unviable within Maastricht. And I want to explain why uh, that's important. Uh, Dean Lockhart, I think, quite rightly mentioned the issue around vulnerable and deprived communities. And uh, while Maastricht has a number of low-income households within the area um, and a number of elderly individuals within the area, it doesn't classify uh, as a regeneration community or a community of deprivation within the city of Aberdeen. So some of the protections and considerations which might be applied to deprived communities would potentially not be applied in the situation as it relates to Maastricht, even though it does have uh, within its community a number of people who would fit within the category of being low income, elderly, vulnerable, uh, but also digitally disenfranchised uh, as well. Um, there is a wider implication about the ATM coverage more uh, widely and the difficulty people would have within a city context. I appreciate it is dwarfed somewhat by the distances individuals would have to travel in rural contexts, but nonetheless, even within a city context, the difficulty in terms of both topography and public transport links for individuals to access alternative ATM provision should the uh, potential nuclear option of all of the ATMs disappearing or the, p the potential, as Gail Ross highlighted, of the ATM running out of money, as has happened at a number of uh, ATMs in the area over holiday weekends, for example, where the ATMs are not regularly uh, topped up. Um, that could have a double whammy in terms of driving people to look elsewhere or forcing them to look elsewhere. And that has a knock-on effect on the businesses. And Dean Lockhart highlighted the £16 spend that takes place in businesses surrounding those ATMs. There are a number of small local businesses contained within the Maastricht shopping area, an area which benefited from the town centre regeneration funding that was put in place uh, after 2007 and has seen the area lifted. But there are still some empty units there. My concern is that if the uh, Clydesdale Bank doesn't reconsider its decision in terms of the ATMs, I think the branch, uh, having had the discussions with them, the branch is going to close in June. They've suggested that they will revisit uh, their survey around ATM coverage and look at whether there's a possibility of retaining the ATMs either in their current location or within another provider within the centre. But if that doesn't happen, and the potential for the link uh, machine to be viewed as unviable by the operator uh, on the basis of the decisions that have been taken uh, by link in relation to the fees that are paid. My constituents and the businesses located in the Maastricht shopping area face a potential double whammy, which I consider would be highly unacceptable. I hope the minister would agree with that. And I think it's important that that is also reflected so that we understand that while the rural context is absolutely important within this, there are also impacts on uh, populated urban communities as well as a result of Link's decision. Thank you very much. I now call on Marie Goujon, last speaker in the open debate. Ms Goujon, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'd really just like to start by adding my thanks to the others of those around the Chamber, to uh, Dean Lockhart, for bringing forward this debate today and highlight, uh, highlighting this very important campaign. And also like to add my thanks to Witch and the FSB for their campaign and for keep, keeping up the pressure on Link and for the briefing material that they also provided for this debate. Because while all the major banks are determined to make us think that no one needs or uses cash anymore so they can get away with shutting all of our branches, that simply isn't the case. And that's why I read the statistics provided by Witch and the FSB with, with great interest, where they found that the demand for banknotes had gone up by 10%, with cash still the most widely used payment method right across the UK. Now, the threat from Link to, the, to reduce the interchange fee and the resulting impact this could have on the network of ATMs across the country is really bad enough in itself. And that's been well articulated around the chamber today. And I thought particularly by Monica Lennon, who highlighted the point about those ATMs who charge people to access their own cash and where it does hit the vulnerable people the hardest. However, 
The news about Link also comes straight on the back of the announcement of bank branch closures announced by RBS and the obvious impact that will have on the availability of ATMs, with that coming straight on the back of Clydesdale bank closures and removal of their ATMs. And obviously we've had the news recently about Santander too. Now the cumulative effect of all of this is huge, especially for the likes of, as we heard today, Richard Lockhead, where I was absolutely shocked to hear the ATMs that all Speyside has left with all the high street ba uh, bank branches having closed. Changes like this are made with no cognizance of those who only use cash, businesses who rely solely on cash transactions, and our rural communities, the festivals and events that they hold, where this is so vitally important. Now, in my constituency in Angus North and Mearns, there have been six bank branch closures over the past two years. Clydesdale Bank closed three out of four in my constituency in Brechin, Forfar and Stonehaven. RBS soon followed suit with bank closures again in Brechin, Lawrence Kirk and Stonehaven, with the recent announcement of closure of the branch in Montrose. And that's why I, probably like many others in this chamber, was absolutely disgusted to get the news from RBS Chief Executive Ross McEwen last week, telling everyone that they were pleased to say they'd had a good start to the year. Well, I'm glad they did, because nobody else did. Uh, because in the first three months, they made a pre-tax profit of £1.2 billion, 70% up on the same period last year. In the meantime, they're determined to pursue a programme of branch closures and they try to appease us with woefully inadequate mobile branch visits. Two hours a week granted to Montrose, which serves not just the town itself, but the wider North East area who were forced to use that branch when the others in the North East closed. And mobile banks, which are inaccessible and don't uh, give us the full range of services. Mm -hmm. And it also forces more pressure on the post office, who seem to be picking up every major bank slack, and again, where the full range of services isn't available. Now, I strongly urge Link to listen to this debate, to listen to what all the members have said and to take heed of it, and ask them not to abandon the communities they serve, like so many others have. And I think there's also a point in here for the Tories too. You have to act for the communities that you serve and do what you can to get the government in Westminster to intervene and stop the RBS branch closures. They have a responsibility and they have the power to do something about it. And it genuinely beggars belief that they've done nothing about it so far. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Goujon. I now call on Paul Healhouse to close the government minister till two o'clock, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, and I would like to join colleagues in thanking uh, Dean Lockhart for raising today's motion, because it is a very important subject, as we've heard from all speakers today. I appreciate that uh, Mr Lockhart and many other members have genuine concerns over Link's proposed changes to interchange rates, the implications uh, for the ATM network, and the impact of those changes on consumers and businesses across Scotland. Uh, as members will know, as has just been highlighted by Marie Goujon, um, the UK government retains legislative and regulatory responsibility for banking and financial services. However, um, the point has been made by uh, Marie Goujon that uh, we, we obviously hope that UK government ministers can take action to intervene here, and of course I would call on them to do so. But I want to put on record that the Scottish Government stands ready to work constructively with all concerned, including UK ministers, uh, in the interests of consumers and businesses insofar as we can. And Link has proposed, uh, clearly as members have discussed, uh, changes to operation of UK's ATM network with the intention of shifting incentives for ATM installation and operation from well-served urban areas to rural and financially excluded communities. And as Monica Lennon, uh, Jamie Halker Johnston have also commented, the, these machines are vital also for uh, some uh, financially excluded communities and families to actually budget as well, to, so they're actually using, withdrawing the money they know they can spend without risk to their, their, their bottom line. And that's a very important function that really hasn't achieved, uh, received the attention it deserves. Uh, but I do take on board Mark McDonald's points entirely. This isn't well, there's some clearly very serious uh, implications for rural communities. There's clearly an issue for urban communities as well. Link is introducing these measures, though, as it believes um, that current incentives cause ATM providers to focus on profitable city centre areas where 80% of free-to-use ATMs are within 300 metres of another free-to-use machine. Um, Link has proposed changes to the interchange rate to take effect from 1st of July of this year. And Link is adopting a phased approach to this reform and each further reduction as we understand it will be subject to further review by Link to assess impact on consumers before implementation. Uh, Link have said uh, to uh, us, ourselves and others that there will be no change in interchange rate for free-to-use ATMs that are one kilometre or more from the next nearest free-to-use ATM and have indicated that 221 Scottish ATMs, as uh, Dean Lockhart indicated, will be protected in this way. 
Uh, now, we do understand, as, as Mr Lockhart referred to, Link is also tripling its financial inclusion subsidy uh, from 10 pence to 30 pence per, uh, for ATMs in areas with poor cash access. I do not yet uh, know if that will support the community of Maastricht, for example, uh, in terms of the point that's been made about urban communities. But clearly, I hope Link will be listening, as Marie Goujon has said in her closing, her, her closing remarks, are listening to the concerns that have been raised in the Chamber today, uh, both in an urban and rural context. And Link believes that we, underst uh, we understand that Link believes that these changes are required to strengthen and increase the geographical coverage of the ATM network in the UK. Uh, and uh, we have to take them at the word, but I would echo them, the response of members across the chamber that we do need Link to be very carefully reviewing uh, the impact of their proposed changes on communities across Scotland and indeed wider uh, UK. Now, while Link aims to support the ATM network in vulnerable communities that are laudable, it is as yet unclear what the practical implications of these changes will be for consumers, businesses and communities in Scotland. I was very interested in the points that were made around the 10% increase in cash use and indeed Richard Lockhead's point was very well made around the use for rural shows and other businesses uh, that uh, require uh, cash and indeed charities in rural areas and urban areas often requiring cash uh, for donations. Now industry body ATM, ATM Industry Association has estimated that as many as 10,000 free to use ATMs could be at risk as a result of Link's plan changes. The uncertainty surrounding the potential implications of these changes on top of continued branch closure announcements, including those announced by Santander, and Joan McAlpin referred to a closure in potential in, in, in Lockerbie uh, in the past week, is unacceptable. And our communities need to know that they will have continuing secure free access to cash to allow them to go about their daily lives. So I am pleased to support the Save Our Cash Points campaign launched by which and the Federation of Small Businesses, although saddened that such a campaign is even necessary, I have written to both the payment systems regulator and to the Treasury in support of the campaign, and I'm pleased I have received uh, constructive responses from the Economic Secretary to the Treasury, John Glenn. Um, the joint campaign by which representing consumers and FSB representing our smaller businesses highlights the continued importance of cash to sustain functioning local economies. And while cash is declining, uh, although I've taken board the point that Marie Goujon has highlighted that there's been a temp evidence of a 10% increase in recent times, it does remain for the many the preferred and in some cases the only form of payment accounting for 40% of transactions. Uh, note the point made by Maurice Corrie about the, the potential risk of increased risk of burglary, that people are stashing cash in their pre premises rather than having to rely on, on uh, achieving access to ATMs or bank branches that are far away from them, particularly if they're elderly. And I have no doubt that society as a whole is perhaps moving to a cashless future and there are real opportunities and benefits to be achieved in doing so. But we are not there yet, and that's the important point to make. And we will not be there for quite some time to come, I'm, I'm sure of that. And so there is a continued need for cash to be readily available to all. So the WITCH FSB campaign calls for uh, the payment systems regulator to conduct a wider market review to ensure consumers continue to have access to cash, covering provision of free-to-use cash points and the long and short-term implications of Link's decision. Link's uh, financial inclusion policy to ensure it meets the needs of consumers and the long-term alternatives which are available to consumers if free cash points are removed. I have written, as I say, to the payment systems regulator indicating the Scottish Government's support for such a review. And given the continuing trend of branch, uh, bank branch closures, it seems likely the communities most affected by such closures uh, will uh, also likely be the most threatened by changes to the ATM network, facing the added uncertainty of the future of ATM provision. I welcome the payment system regulator's commitment to actively monitor developments as Link's proposals are implemented. Uh, indeed, this is uh, a point re referenced in John Glenn's response. I understand that the payment system regulator will require Link to report to it monthly on the impact of its decision and on action that Link has taken to address any unexpected negative impact on the free-to-use ATM network. If any protected ATM is due to close, the PSR is keen to ensure that there is a quick transition to a new operator without any adverse effects on consumers, and we need to hold on to that. I hope that the PSR will go further and use its regulatory powers and commit resource to ensure that no ATM in a vulnerable community closes until a new operator is found and that communities are not left without free uh, access to cash uh, being constrained as a result of Link's changes. Uh, on the branch, branch closures in my closing remarks, as Gail Ross, Dean Locker, Joan McAlpine, uh, Monica Lennon and many others have highlighted, Concerns have been raised again today about the impact of branch closures on our local communities. These are being exacerbated, as is highlighted by Richard Lockhead and Mary Goujon, uh, about uh, closures, uh, changes, sorry, uh, reductions in service offered by mobile banking units. 
uh, to communities already affected by branch closures, and that is a great matter of great regret. And I think we agree, all agree, that those closures are a body blow to communities across Scotland, uh, leaving many areas with significantly reduced branch uh, coverage. Closure announcements, unfortunately, continue with Santander being the latest. Link and PSR have given indications that they will take into account the needs of communities affected by branch closures, as often when the branch closes an ATM, uh, and vital sources of cash uh, are lost alongside the branch services as well and, as the And please conclude to make for two o'clock, please, Minister. I'm indeed, uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I support all the comments made today and thank you, Dean Lockhart, again for raising this important Thank you. Today. Thank you very much. And uh, it's time that concludes that debate. It's time to move on to the next item of business in just a few moments.